Hi, welcome back to another segment of RC Media Live. I'm your host, Kay Kira Bernard, and today we have a very special guest. Now, you know how we usually talk about the youth and we want to get to know the members here at Resurrection Center? Well, I have a special treat. With us today is Deliver. Hi. Hey, guys. How are you doing? You go by Del, right? Yeah, Del. Okay, so I can call you Del throughout the whole interview? Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Cool, cool. So before we get into anything, for those who don't know you, because I have the pleasure of knowing him, yeah, yeah, yeah. tell us a little bit about yourself. So when did you start coming to RC? Um, about five years ago. I don't remember the exact date, but um, we were moving around and we were invited to this church for someone that we knew that was coming here. And the moment that we got here, we just never left. You know? <laughs> So, I mean, it's been dope, you know, a lot of experiences, many years growing and everything, but I appreciate this church a lot. I like that. So for those who don't know, can you tell us a bit about who's your father? Um, so my father is Ricardo Pierre. He's the pastor of the French ministry service here at RC. I and love how you said that, because you're like, we came and we weren't sure first day, we stayed, and now he's the Yeah, the now he's pastor, you know, God, God works in <laughs> mysterious ways. He really does. Yeah. So you're here at Resurrection Center, do you serve in any of the departments at RC? Um, currently, I'm in the youth praise, teams, praise team um, with uh, Riandra and Doyd. Okay, so tell us a bit about praise teams, because we had some praise team members before, Yeah. and if anyone watches the morning service, you see the praise team. But the youth praise team, what do you do on it exactly? Um, so I play drums. Um, I've been playing drums for a couple of years. I took a break actually, and I came back and they welcomed me with open arms, and I appreciate them for that, definitely. But um, the team is amazing, actually. It's like a, it's more like a family than a team, and you know we're real with each other and we. We're working towards the same goal, which, you know, it's easier for us to communicate and, you know, just growing together also in God. And So you mentioned growing together in God. Yeah. So one thing we like to talk about a bit is our, like, testimonies a bit or our walk with Christ. So do you mind sharing how you end up growing a bit with God? Because you mentioned um, you were a pastor's kid, right? Yeah. And I know sometimes you definitely have your fair share of like ups and downs so if you don't mind sharing a bit of your testimony because i grew up in church too so yeah. i somewhat get the pressure okay okay, okay. um uh, so yeah so i grew up in church you know um when i was like around let's say high school is when life kind of started to hit a little different um so you know school wise uh you know losing trust and kind of seeing things in a different way also and you know struggling with like personal struggles and life situations which didn't help which led me to kind of leaving the church a bit so I was like in and out of church and like I always had faith like I knew who God was and who Jesus is but I wasn't really in touch with my spiritual side and you know I lost patience so I kind of started to just trust in myself and my own abilities and I said okay like you know, I'm gonna take care of myself. So, you know, that, that didn't go as planned. Um, I'm, it wasn't all bad, but at the end of the day, like, in the back of my head, I always knew that I had to go back to God. And, like, He was calling me, and I was trying to ignore it, but, <sighs> you know, <laughs> God works in the way He wants. And He, you know, He let me do what I wanted to do for a while. And because he knew that I would make that choice personally and that that's what I needed to be able to fully commit to him. You know what? I relate to that on so many levels. Yeah, I think yeah. I had the same situation too, in and out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. sometimes we think, well, at least for me, it was like God was the God of my mom. Yeah. You know, yeah, and it yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. I know, you know who he is. We speak about him, but like... Well, like personally, you know? Yeah. And like, I think uh, growing up in church also, I've heard that your parents' faith can't save you. Mm -hmm. And that's a personal choice that you have to make. So, I didn't, they, you have to go what you have to go through and able to be able to, to get what you need to be. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I know it's not easy. I know it took me no, a while to no. open up about like depression and anxiety. Yeah. It, like even to this day, I don't think I fully open up about it. Mm. But I had to go through the waves too, where like 
I started trusting in myself. I did the yeah. same thing. No. And then when that collapsed, I was shattered because I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm a loser. I have nothing, you know? <laughs> and then literally, and then I had yeah, to like turn nothing, back, nothing. you know, to reading the word. And I was like, oh, you know, yeah. I get it now. But I had yeah. to have an aha moment. When was your aha moment, if you remember? Um, I guess it was a, like last year. So the thing is that when you live in the world, there's like choices and decisions that you need to make in order to really like live that lifestyle. And the thing is, it's like, I'm a big family person. So there's a lot of things I wouldn't do because I'm like, how is this gonna affect my life and my family? Mm. And I just find myself like in a cycle and I'm like, I have all these dreams, all these goals and like, I know I have a bigger purpose, but I'm just like spinning in the cycle and like I was lost and like I took this trip and like, you know, it was a good time. But in the back of my head, I was just like, I just heard like God's voice and I'm like, yo, like this is, you know, when you're not thinking about him, but he's just speaking to you. Yeah. And like, I didn't have a choice but to like acknowledge it. So when I came back from my trip, like maybe a week later, I legit, I just like went to my mom and I was like, um, you know, I'm trying to read my Bible again, but I don't know where to start. And I think like it made her happy in the sense that like I I came, came to, to her, her, you know, it wasn't like her trying to get me to, to read my Bible. But yeah, I made that choice. And then I came to a prayer meeting on Tuesday where I got like a word and everything. And like, it was crazy. It was crazy because like God's God really works in mysterious ways and like everything he does has a purpose and like you can't really understand unless he reveals it to you. So I got like great revelation and then the next Sunday was baptism and at first I was like, Oh, it's okay, like they already have the people, I'll wait till next time and then Bishop just went ahead and said, You know what? It's open to anyone, anyone? And everyone. And I was like, I was still like hesitant. I'm like, oh, it's open, but it's okay, I'll wait. And then I saw my brother go and then I got convicted and I was like, ah. Okay. I was like, yeah. And it's like, the thing that I stand by on right now is like, when you make a choice or a decision, like stand on it, you know? Mm. And so, you know, I made my choice and I was like, okay, like, let me walk in faith and just see what God has for my life. Okay. You said so many things, which was so beautiful. First, when you mentioned a baptism, I'm like, that moment within itself was so beautiful. Yeah. Um, so it was a baptism that occurred a few... It was in December, like, uh, okay, more things like months. the yeah. second Sunday or something like that. Right. It was yeah. like almost a year ago, but it was wonderful because we had people just getting up, yeah. wanting to take back that to step back of faith. And yeah. That was great. That and was watching great. your family. So you mentioned you're a big family person. Yeah. And you were afraid to make decisions because how would it affect your family? How mm. many siblings do you have? This is for those who don't know. How many siblings do you have? So I have seven siblings. I have five sisters and two brothers. Okay. Blessing within itself. And <laughs> within the seven siblings. Eldest? Yeah, I'm the oldest. Okay. The eldest. So that yeah. pressure must have been grand. Um, I've learned how to understand it more because at first you know when you grow up it's like yeah you're the oldest and it's like people look up to you it's like it kind of felt like a burden but at the end of the day like me going what I went through and I'm kind of like I didn't realize that they actually look up to me mm. you know for sure not like maybe not all of them but some of them actually like you know take after what I do or they'll be like okay if he's moving like this can I can I do this and everything so I kind of growing up learn how to be more of a role model so it kind of helped me to okay like watch what i say watch how i act how i react and everything so so yeah yeah if you can if you there's one thing you hope that your siblings would imitate from you what would it be um to be honest just being humble and knowing that god has a plan for you so do what you have to do, but just trust that God has you at the end of the day. I like that. Yeah. So I want to bring it back to baptism. You said you saw your brother go. Yeah. Younger brother that went up. Yeah. Was there another sibling that also went as well? I think my little sister also, mm -hmm. which was super surprising because it's like, um, 
in a way in church you don't expect like young kids to really like walk or act in that type of faith and you could see that it wasn't like nobody pushed her like she made that choice for herself and like that was that was amazing to be honest it's it was amazing really, to me too <laughs> <laughs> no it was it was really like just seeing how god moves like more and more because what i think it's like just the beginning of this year in january that like after the like the fast that we did like you know we do it every the 21 days yeah like i actually took it seriously this year and like that's really what like threw me into this year up until now and god's just been moving moving like crazy so since you say moving i have to bring it up so we do an annual youth retreat yeah a summer retreat yeah. and this year was a little different and i said it was different for me although i've only been it was my third time it was a little different for me as a leader to watch some of the student leaders lead prayer um so you were there i have to tell you again so proud of you i have to say it what was that moment like when you start taking that leap of faith because when we do our christian walk so we start reading our bibles and i mm -hmm. want to go back to that a little bit later yeah. start reading our bibles and then we start serving in church and then the next step is to act out on faith, like how we're called to be, mm -hmm. right? We're called out to pray for others, right? To evangelize. Yeah. What was that moment like for you? Um, it's hard to describe because it's not something that you plan. And my goal going to this, uh, like, this one and further youth retreats, it's really just to like let God use me however he wants to use me mm. and and like it's just like him like his holy spirit in me taking over in a way because at the end of the day like i can pray but if i don't have the spirit then there's no like effect or there's no like um there's nothing behind it you know right and i can't save anybody or i can't like right. deliver anybody it's really like god just using me and through me doing his work so Honestly, it was it was amazing. Like, like if I, I would never think, if you had told me a year ago that yeah. <laughs> this is how it would be, I'd probably just look at you and be like, mm, okay. Oh, okay, you know, sure? like, yeah. <laughs> <You say> so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, it, it, it's it's amazing though. Like, it it's a different feeling, hundred mm. percent. Like, actually being used by God, you know that like there's a greater purpose behind it, and mm. that whatever comes out of it. It's, it's like uh, it's like planting a seed right. and at the end of the day like God takes care of it so it's going to grow the way it's supposed to grow and it has nothing to do with me at the end of the day so I don't take any credit or trying to get anything out of it you know it's just really just being used by God thank you so you're right it is about being used by God yeah, at the end yeah. of it but you have to allow yourself to be open to be used by yeah, God yeah right? 100% 100% and I think sometimes taking that step is tricky because it means you got to let go of control <sighs> We won't get into that, <laughs> but it means releasing things that you normally hang on to. Yeah. So you're a young person. Do you mind saying how old you are? I'm um, 21 years old. Okay, 21 years old. And you mentioned about reading the Bible, the yeah. daunting, reading yeah. the Bible. So do you have any advice on how you started on reading the Bible? So as a regular person, yeah, as a anyone, of course, um, you kind of think of a Bible as just a book in a way you know it's like yeah there's stories there's lessons there's like you know parables and like all these different stuff but um once you get a different perspective on okay how to approach it how to read it and and the fact that the word is alive you know it's God speaking to us through like all these different stories and all these different like uh teachings and the words so yeah so um once i learned that like i started reading differently and it's more about spending time with god than just trying to read something and get something out of it yeah. so once you actually allow god to speak to you because god speaks in different ways whether it's through the word or revelation or um, uh, hearing his voice and or feelings in different areas but once you actually open up to receiving from him, then you're, the word that you're reading is not from your understanding and from your mindset, but you're really letting him like kind of change how you think. And 
when you get the revelation, then you'll be like, it's more like, oh, okay, I didn't see it that way. And like, it helps you to kind of like open up your eyes and mm. to what the word really is and to what this world really is and like life around you and everything. And it's really like getting like a source of strength and energy from God directly. Especially like, let's say, if you read your Bible like during the day or in the morning so that if that's, that's how you start your day then you know right. you're starting on the right foot right and yeah. i'm glad you said that because a lot of times you're right it is daunting i remember the first well i'll be honest the first reason why i started reading my bible was because again born and raised in a church yeah and like when i got serious with christ you know everyone would quote these random scriptures They're like ah and you know, obey your parents <laughs> like, you know what i mean because it's in the word you know no, and it, it used to drive me nuts because i'm like what you mean yeah so yeah, then yeah. i opened the bible and i went genesis to revelations and okay. i was just reading to read it for myself yeah. right um but the second time around i think when i read it i got more in tune with having wisdom from god mm. right just allowing his spirit to lead mm -hmm. and i'm glad you said that because believe it or not whether you're young and old a lot of people have never actually read the whole bible um, a lot of times we rely on preachings mm -hmm. um, which there's nothing wrong with that but you should always go back and check for yourself because yeah. as you said revelation happens in many forms right yeah so i can read a scripture we can both read the same scripture and then what is revealed to you can be different than what's revealed to me exactly um so i'm glad you mentioned that and if ever you feel intimidated to open the bible um take his advice which was really beautiful which was see it as the word of god and not just some story yeah because i think yeah. a lot of times we read it and we're like oh yeah yeah uh it's a story um so you also mentioned which i like tuesday night prayers um it's led by Prophetess Inika, if I'm mm. not mistaken. Okay. And what, do you mind explaining what happens there a bit? So, it's, um, it's really a moment where we get together to really just like pray together because in the Bible it says where two or three are together, God is there. Mm -hmm. And in accord. In That's accord, right, in accord. in accord. You know what? He is French, first language. You're doing well. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, what's great is that you see people with, like, the same heart and hunger to really get close to God, to, to draw from Him also, and to be able to pour out into each other. So, there's... Um, uh, there's ministering, there's praying, there's um, deliverance, there's healing. And I didn't think you can't plan it. It's just really being open to to receive from the Holy Spirit. And however God moves is how he moves. But for real, Tuesday night prayers are, are amazing, mm -hmm. are amazing. And like me personally, it's, it's helped me to kind of, like in my personal life, I got I got prayer also, which yeah. which has helped me. But also just seeing like the power of prayer is uh, is is dope. It's nice, huh? It's dope. I yeah. agree. So again, so just to recap, if you are young and you're starting your walk with Christ, um, what was encouraged, highly encouraged, was of course read your Bible. Yeah. And also seek out communities that can help guide you. 100%. Right. So I want to bring it back to youth. Yeah. To bring it back to youth. Yeah, yeah. There's a plan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I bring it back to you, and you say you served on the praise team. Yeah. Right? And how does that help with your spiritual walk as well? Um, it, it helps me really, like I said, to be used by God. Mm -hmm. So I play drums. I don't consider myself like the best, but... Why are you I, selling yourself so I'm short? I'm not selling myself <laughs> short. It's just that, like, um, I'm kind of using it in the way as, like, God using me to mm. to minister. Because, like, I'm, like, I think, like, especially when, like, His Spirit is there. Yeah. Like, when I play, it's not like, okay, I'm just trying to get the right note at the right time, play the right thing. It's really just letting the Spirit move however mm. He wants to move. And it's different, to be honest. It's not the same as just, like, okay, we're rehearsing, you know, it's really like, okay, let's put what we learn into action and just let God take it where he wants to take it. I like that. Yeah. So you're going to be the youth, the youth, you're on the youth drummer, the youth worship team. Yeah. So we also have something else that's coming up, the youth conference. Yeah. Yo, yo, so yo, yo, tell yo. those that are watching a little bit about it and what that's like. So 
The youth conference is an event um, happening on September 1st to September 3rd, which is Friday to Sunday. And basically, it's, uh, it's for everybody, so adults to young people, but it's really to encourage the youth to, to know that you have a space to worship God openly and to get that connection from Him directly, mm. you know? So it's really like an open space where we can have a good, fun time in God's presence to receive and also to, to be able to let go of some things that we hold on on a daily basis, you know? And, you know, get your freedom and, no, it's gonna be a great time. I encourage every young person uh, parents bring your children. Of course, and, yes. And yeah, yeah. Awesome. So September 1st to the 3rd. Yeah, exactly. Great. So transitioning. We know you as Del, worship, the youth worship drummer. Yeah. Also known you also for your wonderful walk with Christ. Yeah. Keep it up. Now we'll talk it. a little bit about something you do on the side, which I don't know if many people know. So you're also like an entrepreneur. Yeah, so I'm um, entrepreneur artist. That's what I I rather call oh, myself. Excuse me, <laughs> entrepreneur artist. <laughs> um, I say it that way because I don't want to categorize what the talents and the gifts that God has used me, Amen. given me, because He can bring me anywhere. He can use me to do anything He mm -hmm. wants me to do. So, uh, but currently I have a shoe customizing business, which is called World Styles. Um, Hit me up on IG <laughs> or look me up on uh, at world underscore styles. Like that. <laughs> so what you do is you like design shoes? Yeah, so I'm uh, customized shoes design. So they can be like blank canvases or they can have like uh, designs already. They don't have to be brand new, but it's really to put your own creativity on a pair of shoes basically. And what brought me to actually starting that business is because, like, as a as a young and also, like, there's a lot of stuff that we want, like, whether it's, like, brands or, like, you have a TV show you like or, you know, different things. And being able to kind of make that a reality or something that you can actually wear kind of, kinds of brings a happiness out of you also, you know. It does. That means you don't have to go buy, like, three thousand a uh, $300 pair of shoes or like $600 and like you know you could get like a, a decent decent price and get what you want at yeah. the end of the day so yeah I like that it's really cool if only yeah. you guys can see his shoes now they're, they're really cool <laughs> got, I gotta rock them every day every as day, you should every day, every day are you working on something else that you haven't said yet or that you want to share so I do have a brand that I'm working on and different projects that I'm working on also. Uh, something that I've recently committed to is uh, on music. So not everyone knows that, but I do write music and mm. I'm not a rapper or a singer, but I do music. We'll, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Um, I'll leave you guys on a cliffhanger because I don't want to like give too much sauce. So. When it oh. when it comes out, it'll come out. You guys will know in advance, definitely. But you should look forward to it. All right, that's fair enough. Thank you for the scoop. <laughs> um, <laughs> so some questions for you. So let's say another young person, right? Yeah. Wanted to start their own venture mm -hmm. into business. What is one advice you would give them? One advice is find something that you're good at and that you enjoy, because you don't want to to throw yourself into something that's gonna become like like it's like um let's say you like art but it's not your passion mm. let's say you throw yourself into an art venture and you're like you're gonna make a business off of it it's gonna feel more like work than something you enjoy and that's not something you wanna unless it's like short term right it won't be something that you want to pursue long term mm. so um uh and pray about it definitely Put it in God's hands and let him take care of the plans and how it's going to go. And all you have to do is just do the work. Trust God and do the work. I like that. I also want to know, so there's business, of course. Yeah. Good advice. 
Yes. Great advice. Yes. So in case you are unsure of how to get started, I like that. Especially prayer. Yeah. Definitely helps. Yeah. Now let's say they're about to start it. They found their passion, heard about it, and they're dealing with fear. Because you have to have you have to be vulnerable a lot of times when you're releasing this out you know, to criticism. So True. do you have any words of wisdom for that? Um so I'll put it together with prayer, as in to ask God to give you the confidence to be bold and to not be afraid to put yourself out there. That making mistakes is not a bad thing, but you can turn your losses into lessons and grow from that and move forward. So, because if you're scared to make mistakes, then you won't be able to push through some walls and at the end of the day you know what you're good at and god gave you that gift for a reason and you have a purpose so don't let anybody keep you from fulfilling that thank you so much thank you so much for being with us today no for problem, joining no us problem. Appreciate it. again it's adele yep. shout out your instagram page one more time so um my page you can find me at kd.world w-r-l-d you know, <laughs> on Instagram, man. Yeah, hit me up. Awesome. Thank you again for being here, and thank you for watching, and we hope to see you back next time. Bye.